Welcome back to Ag Enterprise Management. If you have not done so already, please review the first introductory module. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I'll be your lecturer for the course. For more information, check out the course site and the syllabus for this course as well. Okay, so learning outcomes over the module. Choice of produce marketing channel is one of the most critical decisions produce farmers must make. This is true for any business. This model introduces students to the history of produce marketing and provides information on the most common marketing options. So learning objectives. So we're going to talk a little bit about the recent history of produce marketing, how produce distribution operates through the primary channels, and the advantages, disadvantages to direct versus wholesale marketing. All right, so when we talk about produce marketing, it really encompasses a lot of different things and really can be overwhelming. So when we talk about produce marketing, it includes post-harvest handling, building relationships with your buyers, the paperwork and accounting. Uh, you know, this is all about the processes of how everything links together. Uh, telling the story of the farm and the farmer, branding and packaging, the promotion and advertising to the end consumer. So it's, it's really the overall strategy of, okay, yeah, you just grew some beautiful looking eggplant, but now what? Okay. And uh, a lot of times this is where small startup farms, you know, they just haven't really thought all the way through to this part. And this takes a whole nother set of skills and um, different ways of thinking um, that if you're going to be you know, an ag entrepreneur, you really need to be uh, aware with or have a strong partner that's going to be helping you with this part of the business. All right, so another way to talk about marketing is with the five P's. This is just standard uh, marketing uh, rhetoric, I guess, um, but it's a good way to look and think about the different parts of it. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, them right now. So we have Yep, all five P's here, the people, price, product, place, and promotion. So starting with the people, all right, these are your customers. You know, this is who you're selling to. This is who's providing you with revenue. Um, so we've already spoken about um, this before. So the focus of marketing has shifted from being product-centric to relationship-centric, particularly in the last 15 to 20 years. Businesses and entrepreneurs have realized the power of relationships. Yeah, so when you're at the uh, farmer's market selling your eggplant, you know, that's whole part of the process where, you know, consumers want to meet you as a farmer and know about, you know, why you're farming, where you're farming, how you're farming. Um, you know, that's really even more important than necessarily the, you know, obviously the quality of the eggplant needs to be there, but... Um, you know, they want to have a relationship with the farm. That's why the whole farm to table movement has become so popular. Uh, price. Uh, price must be competitive, reasonable, and fit the budget and income ranges of the market to which it is intended. Okay, same thing if you're selling eggplant at the farmer's market. You know, eggplant's got to be at a reasonable price that people expect and can afford. This also needs to be able to um, fit within uh your cost of production we're going to be talking about that later product all right as we already said you want to have a product that stands out above the fold has a unique selling proposition analyze your competition establishment or products like your own and those that compete with alternative products so that you know how others in the market are succeeding all right so you can't just work in a bubble you gotta look and see who else is around you who else is selling eggplant all right is your eggplant a little bit different? How do you differentiate yourself? I'm right, talking about place. All right, where are you going to sell this product? It's going to be a store, a reset farmer's market. Uh, you're going to sell it online. I mean, what does that look like? And then promotion. So how do you get the word out? So advertising and promotional action plans are necessary for any product success. In the direct marketing field, this is largely up to the company representative and often augmented with sales tools from the company. Basically, this is just saying there's a lot of different ways that you could promote. A lot of times when we talk about marketing, people directly go to promotion. 
Like, oh, how are you going to market? Oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a Facebook page. Like, okay. Yeah, but that's just one tactic, one strategy in a promotion plan. Okay. Okay. Well, if this looks familiar, it's because it is. So this is all should be sounding familiar going back to our business model canvas. We're talking about our customer segments. All right. So, so that's, what's the nice thing about the business model canvas is that, you know, it takes all these different pieces and puts it back into here. So here we are talking about our customer segments again. Okay. And these are the different segmentation of our customers. Okay. And also the value proposition, you know, what, what makes our product better, unique compared to the other products that are out there. Okay. Answers to the why. And also our customer relationships. Where are we meeting our customers? How are we communicating with our customers? Where are our customers? And, and what kind of relationship do we have with them? Are we meeting them every week at the farmer's market? Are we meeting them online? What's happening? Okay. So, you know, as part of, you know, marketing, it's, it's, you're not just getting the word out there about our products, but figuring out like, you know, before we start up a business is, is your idea even valid? Um, you know, a lot of times we like to just assume, Hey, I have a great idea. Everyone's going to love it. And you just start going into business. But with doing a little bit of market research ahead of time, we can get an idea of, you know, really what, instead of making assumptions, we try to get some data and some, uh, actual information from potential customers, which in effect may, uh, guide us towards, uh, making some changes to our products or services or going to a different location to sell our products and services, um, really answers a lot of key questions. That's what we have listed here. So one good question to be able to answer is, is my business concept a good idea? Yeah. Uh, of course your idea is a good idea. Everything you have is a good idea, but it's good to really try and answer that question. You know, is it a good idea? And not just your friends or your mom saying, yeah, hey, way to go. Great idea. But truly getting out there and seeing if the market wants what you're saying you have to offer. You know, is there a market for the business? Okay, it may be a really good idea, but just the right market isn't there for it. You know, is there space in the market for my product or is the market saturated? So say the market saturated just means there's too many other players already in that field. Okay. So yeah, if you're trying to sell eggplants at the KCC farmer's market, chances are there's probably already a few people selling eggplant at the KCC farmer's market. So that's the idea of thinking and you know, looking around who's doing what, who's already out there. Okay. If you're already in business, who's buying your product now? I'm really identifying you know, how do you define those customers? Uh, and that goes back to those customer demographics. Okay. Who's my target customer? We've been talking a lot about that. Is my target market interested in this business? All right. You may think that, uh, everyone who, uh, goes to school at university of Hawaii, Manoa is going to be interested in your product. Well, how do you know that? Are you sure? How did you validate that hypothesis? How much do my target customers know about my product or service and how much do they need to learn about it? Okay. So this is where the promotion part of it. So you may have an, a great product and your target market may absolutely want it. But if they don't know about you, then there's a disconnect. So that's where I have to figure out how to make that connection. What price points will target customers accept? Okay. So this is, you know, trying to figure out what is the right price. You know, if you're going and selling your eggplants for a dollar a pound, but then you find out that, you know, they would actually be okay and willing to accept buying eggplant at $3 a pound. Well then 
you're losing out on two dollars a pound how feasible is it that my business will be profitable okay might be a great idea it may be fulfilling uh, target markets needs but at the end of the day if you're not making any money is that uh, okay for you uh, what is my supply chain all right so how how you know, once you have a product you know getting all the ingredients or all the products that you need to make those products you know where where do you get them from you know is it easy enough just to go to Costco or can you go to Home Depot or do you have to order seeds from the mainland uh, can you get fertilizer from Konea you know figuring out all those you know inputs that you're going to need where where are they and then how can I access the market and receive a fair price I so you mentioned this before too about farmers markets you know just because you want to have uh, a farm stand at a local farmers market it's actually very competitive to get into the farmers markets so I think a lot of times people just assume oh yeah I'm just gonna sell at the farmers market well is that true All right, so these are the, the kind of research you know the kind of questions that you need to be able to answer before you even start spending any money so a lot of times people just get excited and they jump right in and unfortunately they have to roll back later to start answering these questions All right, so there's a few different mainstream marketing channels. This includes produce wholesales, retail grocery stores, mass merchandisers, shippers, packers, food service buyers, brokers, export marketing channels. Keep in mind, grocery stores sell a majority of fruits and vegetables, over 70%. Right, so a lot of times, you know, especially when you get off starting in the beginning, you know, you're just selling retail directly to friends, uh, maybe through a CSA. Uh, maybe at a farmer's market, but really when you start growing then you need to be able to get have access to more markets So really looking at different channels of how to get into grocery stores is uh, the most popular route for uh, Growers throughout the United States According to the 2011 organic production survey organic sales included 81% of wholesale market sales 13% went direct to retail sales and 6% uh, consumer direct sales so even in organic production survey uh, wholesale market sales was over 80 percent so let's talk a little bit about wholesale buyers as right, so a wholesale buyer buys and resells or distributes produce to retail grocers restaurants food service companies and or other wholesale markets so some examples here uh, in Hawaii uh, Diotani produce Armstrong Produce, um, these uh, companies are buying produce from local farmers, mainland farms, and then distributing them throughout the islands. Wholesale produce distributors take custody of a grower's produce once it's purchased. They sell produce from their warehouse and take responsibility for its care once it is received. So the wholesale, you know, wholesale buyer is the customer for the farm. Right, so there's some uh, advantages and disadvantages to that we'll get into um, that so uh, work with a wholesale buyer typically they're gonna be buying larger volumes from you right? so that's probably the main advantage um, especially when the farm starts really booming you have a lot of product um, instead of trying to go out and find every individual customer yourself uh, if you have a good relationship with a wholesale buyer um, they may be able to buy um, everything that you have uh, as I mentioned before, you don't have to deal with the end consumer directly, right? So when you're selling retail, you're selling directly to that end customer. So this is a person who's going to take home that eggplant or kale and consume it themselves directly. They're not going to be reselling that, that product. Uh, and typically, the transportation is managed by the wholesaler, right? So depending on the situation, a uh, distributor will come out to the farm with their refrigerated vehicles pick up the product so for your operation all you have to do uh, is focus on the growing and harvesting and then the wholesaler can take care of the rest of it uh, some disadvantages uh, it can be hard to keep customers 
right? If you don't have a consistent product, the wholesaler, um, you know, depending on the kind of customers they have, they may want to move on and work with another farm that they can get uh, a more consistent supply from. Uh, you need to get good market price information. So it can be hard if you're not doing your research, uh, you get in a situation where the wholesaler is you know, giving, uh, telling you what the price is gonna be for your products. So you need to be um, smart and know what is the value of your product so that you're not being taken advantage. Uh, you may need to have on-farm sales office for customer service. Right, so you still have to have, uh, oh, you know, that's part of that customer channel. You know, how are you communicating with these wholesalers on uh, the type of products that are available, when they're available, pricing, uh, pickup or delivery logistics. Uh, and then you must bill these customers and collect money. So a lot of times um, when you're selling to a wholesaler, you will provide them with the product, you'll provide them with an invoice, and then there may be certain terms for that invoice, so they may pay uh, anywhere from one week to 30 to 60, if not even longer, uh, period of time before you actually go ahead and get paid. Uh, another thing to keep in mind too, uh, we're talking more and more about food safety, and we're talking more about it throughout this class. Uh, next few years, expect to see steadily increasing barriers to entry into the wholesale market in the form of required gap. So this is good agricultural practices and food safety certification requirements. And so this uh, is really you know, a lot of talk in the local ag community around food safety. So this is gonna be a requirement, a certification that you as a farmer may need to have before certain wholesalers uh, are gonna be willing to work with you. In addition to farmers selling their produce wholesale, there's other more direct uh, intermediate ways that uh, farmers can sell their produce. And this has you know, certain kind of advantages such as uh, potentially higher uh, profit margins, uh, but then there also could be more work involved on the farmer's part. Um, you know, as we kind of mentioned, you know, the trend is that you know, consumers are looking for that more direct market relationships with their farmer. You know, know your farmer, know your food. Uh, they want to have a personal connection to the farms. They also want to provide direct financial support to farmers. Um, they don't want to be uh, having their money bounce around to a variety of different middlemen. They want to support their local farmers directly. And also, this helps them to realize the perceptions of freshness, absence of pesticides, and farm worker safety. Right? By having this relationship with the farmer, they get to know where their food is really coming from. So direct marketing alternatives are generally a more accessible market for new farmers. As I mentioned before, if you're starting off as a uh, you know, beginning eggplant farmer, these are some easier routes to go than selling to a wholesaler because you probably won't have the relationship and also maybe the quantity or the uh, experience uh, to start selling to a wholesale option. All right, some of these direct options include going direct to grow tail, uh, grocery retail stores. All right, so there's just some options here in Hawaii. One of them has been Cocoa Market, which if you guys are following them, they're kind of having a tough time right now. Um, but that is an option for farms to go directly to the store and be able to sell their product. And they are actually set up as a retail consumer cooperative, which we'll be talking more about. Um, when we get into business structures. Um, selling directly to a restaurant is an option. Um, town restaurant in Kamuki is famously known for um, doing this. Uh, Roy's is one of the first restaurants um, to really build relationships with uh, specific farmers around the state. Um, so farmers are able to go to the back door and offer them whatever products they may have. So the advantage of this is that they're going to be able to get a higher price. And typically there's going to be less stringent standards than wholesaling. So it's less difficult to get to good market price information. And less elaborate on-farm sales office because there are relatively few customers. 
less billing system, cooling, labels, standard cartons, packaging, harvest crew, delivery because the products don't need to travel a long way and customers do not require standardized packaging. Right? So if you're working with the restaurants in your community, you, know, you have that direct relationship, you know when they're going to be using the product. So as soon as you harvest or as soon as you get a phone call from the restaurant uh, or the grocery store, you can just head on down there with your products. Uh, disadvantages, uh, this is a different type of marketing skills. Farmers need to be able to go and communicate to these stores and restaurants directly. Uh, it can be a limited market. Right? There's only so many farm to table restaurants available uh, in Hawaii, especially also now we have a lot of uh, upstart farms that are starting to hit the market. A lot of them are going to some of the same places. Uh, typically a sale is going to be a smaller amount you know restaurants uh, it can be surprising you know they don't really use uh, as much products as maybe as you would think so a lot of times they're looking for small amounts of specialty products uh, customer service is a must and it's going to be expensive and, and hard to do right so if a restaurant uh, is ordering a product you know maybe they want it by tomorrow are you uh, going to be able to fulfill that that order is that is that how you're going to work um, some supermarket chains are closed to local growers because they have year-round contracts with larger wholesale distributors so guys like Safeway times you can't just show up you know at the back door um, where they are you know they need to have a real consistent supply of product for their customers so typically uh, that may not be an option and the restaurant industry is characterized by rapid changes in personnel. The chef or buyer can change suddenly, creating a need to constantly develop new relationships with potential buyers. So farmers markets, these are another great option. Um, so I have a stat here from USDA National Farmers Market Week of 2013, a little bit dated, but saying that there were over 8,144 farmers markets uh, throughout the United States and we've all seen here in Hawaii the huge increase in farmers markets um, just in the past 10 years growth in farmers markets is a response to consumer trends of shopping as recreation people enjoy going on a Saturday or Sunday morning or Thursday afternoon um, to see all the different products uh, socialize with their neighbors and pick up a lot of really good food items uh, there's a higher perceived a level of freshness and quality and consumers seek out their favorite farms and want to support them every week so once again it's about building that face-to-face -face relationship and then customer preference um, where they're able to really get that personal attention you know they're they're able to pick out those individual items that they want and they can even hear more of the story behind uh, the produce and the food that they're buying so advantages to farmers markets so it's an opportunity to build relationships directly with the end consumer. You're typically going to have a higher margin on produce and also get that instant cash. Uh, you typically are going to have exemption from packing standards because you don't really need to uh, you know, have a packaging that's suitable for a grocery store because you're going to be selling it right then and there at the market. And it's also possible to use substandard product. So if you have off-grade uh, eggplant you can still bring with you to the market and you're able to have a conversation with people and say hey you know this eggplant still tastes fantastic it just looks a little funky I also can have access to chefs so this is a place where a lot of chefs shop as well so you'll be able to meet chefs and maybe create additional accounts and you as a farmer don't necessarily have to attend yourself uh, you're able to send an employee or maybe a uh, hooey up with a few other farmers, like some other uh, farm co-ops uh, in the state are doing. So disadvantages, right? good markets are often already saturated, not accepting new growers. Right? This is a lot of times the case, uh, like with the KCC farmers market, it's already packed with farmers, so there's a long waiting line to be able to get into that market. Uh, it can be hard to move large volumes of produce right? if it's a small market, so it just depends on the size of the market, how many people are coming there, what other farms are there as well. Uh, also, it's a lot of work going to a farmer's market. You have to, well, in addition to growing and harvesting all the produce, and you have to load up the truck, uh, drive to the location, 
unload, set up, do the sales for the day, and then pack up the truck, and then come back to the farm all over again. And you also need to have a high degree of social skills. Right? So this is direct face-to-face -face marketing. A lot of farmers typically don't like to do this, but it's a very important part of the farmer's market. All right, so another uh, option too that we mentioned a few times, we're going to talk in more detail, is the Community Supported Agriculture, the CSA. All right, so this is where individual consumers pay uh, a purchase or purchase shares at the beginning of the season. And then as the farm is having harvest throughout the season, the CSA members will then receive a share of that produce um, through, throughout the season. Uh, it attracts sophisticated consumers who want to provide financial and other forms of support for regional agriculture. Uh, some of the advantages, it solves pre-plant financing. So that's a nice thing. In a typical CSA model, your customers will pay you uh, uh, money up front for the entire season. So this allows you to go buy all of your seed, uh, your amendments, uh, everything you need to go ahead and get your season started. Uh, provides a guaranteed market. Right? So once you have their money, um, you're pretty much good to go. They can keep, um, you know, as long as you're able to provide um, uh, you know, harvest throughout the season, then you know exactly the amount of revenue you're going to be having for that season. Uh, typically, no middlemen, uh, except for in the case of something like Oahu Fresh, which is a different kind of a model. Um, and this equals you, know, you having a p potential higher amount of profit. Also, too, it's a nice way to be able to moderate over and under supply of different kinds of product. Right? So you may have a lot of kale um, where if you're trying to sell to restaurants, farmers markets, you may not be able to sell. But since you have a CSA set up, you can then have more kale and people share um, for that week or a couple of weeks. And you also get to set the terms of the delivery schedule. So you're really in control of how your market is working. Disadvantages. All right, it's a complexity of a cropping system. So yeah, you can't just have kale throughout the entire season. You need to be able to show um, you know, a variety of different products. So this can be challenging uh, for a small farm. Uh, once again, you do need to be able to market and communicate uh, with your different customers. You know, some customers are gonna be complaining about uh, maybe too much kale in the box. So how do you handle that? and requires a high level of coordination and paperwork to manage subscriptions and logistics for delivery. Right? So it's a lot of you know, making sure each box has all the items that it's supposed to and then getting those uh, deliveries where they need to be, when they need to be, um, so that the customers are going to be happy. All right, so that's it for produce marketing. Uh, check out the course website for additional readings and assignments. So we went over talking about uh, for a small farm, how to go about um, starting to think about selling your product, all right? And this is really kind of the first area that you should be thinking about. Um, if you just go ahead and start growing, and then then you start, then you try to figure out where you're going to be selling your product, it may be a little bit too late, especially since we're talking about a perishable product, all right? So that's why this is the first area of the business model canvas that we focus on. Okay. Uh, any questions? Check out the course website. Talk to you soon.